Good morning, everybody. So today we're going to be installing a new anode rod in this Ream Proterra hybrid electric water heater. I installed this water heater, let's see, um, I think it was, yeah, December of 2023, so it's not quite even two years old yet. Um, I've actually never replaced an anode rod in a water heater, um, so maybe that's a me problem. Uh, my last water heater was a state. It lasted for six years, so maybe that's why. Maybe I should have replaced the anode rod, but we're going to try a bit of a different product today. Um, this is called a Coro Protec. It is a powered anode rod. This is supposed to last a lot longer, cause the tank to last a lot longer. Seems to get pretty good reviews online, so we're going to give it a shot. First things first, uh, there's a bunch of Phillips head screws that hold this top cover on here. You can see there's a split between here and here. Screw there, there, back there, and back there. Um, but first, let's kill the power to the unit. Mine is just a simple plug, so I'll just unplug it. And I'll take out these four screws along the perimeter, and there's six screws Phillips head uh, along the top. They look like self-tappers. You get the idea. Move the toolbox away for easier access. So yeah, I got the four screws along the perimeter. One, two, three, four, five, six, and again, all along the perimeter. So now this thing should lift right up. I might have to pry back some of this tape from this little makeshift duct here, um, but you probably won't have that issue. Let's take the filter out. I'm assuming we'll have to lean this thing off to the side onto something, because those wires are not just gonna disconnect, I'm assuming. Um, let's see what we got, and then we'll figure out what we can lean it on. Okay, so it does come off pretty easily. Tape wasn't an issue. Okay, I got the cover off to the side and I got a rag over the edge just to protect the wiring. And you can see all the way down there is our anode rod. That thing there. So inch and a sixteenth socket should take care of that. Very curious to see what the old one looks like after not even two years. Before we get all excited and do something dumb, let's drain a couple gallons off the bottom of the thing. So I have an old uh, washing machine supply hose hooked up to the drain here. I'll aim the other end of it into a bucket. And we'll just turn this off here. go we'll open this guy up that's an air in and yes I know this should be drained to a floor drain I don't have a floor drain though so that's the way it's just gonna have to be let that drain for a while all right a little update this plastic grommet surrounds that anode rod inside the insulation this thing is in there really well um, I tried to take it out without destroying it, but I was obviously unsuccessful. What I found worked to remove it was slit it with a razor blade there and there, stick a pair of um, adjustable pliers, twist, and then pull, and then, then it came out. Um, I don't really know what functional purpose this serves, but the socket would not fit on the anode rod without this removed. So. Unfortunately, we couldn't take it out in one piece, but it is what it is. Now we need to take our inch and one sixteenth socket and uh, unscrew this thing. And that's what it looks like with that plastic piece removed. You can see that the anode rod is slightly offset in that hole, which makes it impossible to get a socket on there with that plastic piece in place. Okay, you can just see my socket and extension sticking up. I have no idea how tight this thing is going to be. Probably pretty tight. I know you guys probably aren't going to see a whole lot because I'm in the way, but I'll do my best for you. Um, so we got to do righty tighty, right? So we got to go the other way. There we go. 
She was tight. Now that it's looser, I'm pivoting over to a ratchet. Okay, now she's really loose. She's completely out. Now we just got to extract it. Sorry you guys missed the action shot, but here is the anode rod out of a Rheem Proterra after just under two years. As you can see, there is still quite a bit left on here, but you can also see it's definitely attacking this rod. Gross. Okay, on to bigger and better things. So we got the anode rod, old one over there. You can see how long it is. And here is the Coro Protect box. You can see how small it is. So clearly not the same size. Opening it for the first time. Not a big fan of unboxing videos, but got to get it out of the box. And I guess that's all it is right there. This is probably a power supply. It is. So it's uh, 1.2 watts. It's 24 volts DC, 50 milliamps. It looks like the anode itself is, anode itself is 15 milliamps. I'm not sure if you guys can read that. But that's what the power supply is rated for. Does have instructions, that's always nice. Several different languages. Okay. 20 year warranty, neato. Let me page through this just to make sure there's nothing I'm obviously missing. Okay, one thing to be mindful of that I'm really not too thrilled about is this hex portion is not inch and one sixteenth. It is inch and three sixteenths. They do call that out in the instructions, but make sure you have an inch and three sixteen socket on hand before you start this job. Um, it is not a terribly common size. I don't use my large sockets very often, but I don't even have an inch and three sixteen socket. And as you can see, I have a lot of sockets. Not one socket in here is inch and three sixteen. So I have inch and a sixteenth, inch and an eighth, inch and a quarter. They don't even have a graduation on my socket organizers for inch and three sixteenths. So that's really frustrating. So now I gotta find one of these darn things. And on a traditional hot water here, that wouldn't be a big deal because this thing protrudes up. So these are the threads here. This would stick up, you could get an adjustable wrench on there. But because this is recessed into the, into the tank, right into the, I guess the hybrid heat pump chamber, that's not gonna work so easily. So we're in a bit of a, a quandary here. Let me see if I can source or find a inch and 316 socket locally. I ran to Lowe's and I got really lucky. They had one of these in stock and on sale. It was like three bucks for this inch and three sixteenths, but they are not easy to find. Home Depot had zero. So plan ahead, make sure you have one of these. Applied some Teflon tape. According to the instructions, they say five or six layers. Let's go and screw this thing in. All right, got the anode rod installed, the powered anode rod. I have the water turned back on. I don't see any leaks. All right, make some progress. I drilled a hole in the side of the unit right here and put one of these grommets in there just so the sharp metal doesn't cut the wire. And I was able to feed the wire without drilling any holes on the inside down like under the pan. There was a tiny little gap that I was able to feed the wire through there. I had to clean up some of that mold there. So it's all hooked up now. Just got to clean up the wiring a tiny bit. And you're supposed to clamp that on the element with pliers. I guess they don't want that thing vibrating loose or something. All right, got the wiring connection crimped on. I think we're good to put it back together. Uh, I made quadruple sure that there's no leaks, so let's get this thing situated back together. Nice rag out of the way.
Okay. Just like that. Let's put those screws back in. I'll do that off camera. Now they also tell you that you need to hook up the other end of this cable to tank metal. So what I'll do is I'll take one of these self tappers here that hold the lid on. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. up got the coral protect plugged in up there let's plug in the water heater not that we should see much of a difference or anything you put the heat uh, filter back in too make sure you bleed all the the lines out too air you don't want to dry fire the water heater fire it up without any water in it or low on water Great way to cause an instant problem. All right, and there's our finished project product. Uh, water heater is running. I got the Coro Protect label on there. I got the wiring all cleaned up a little bit. And that should be it for hopefully 20 years, maybe. Um, don't forget to register the product on the company's website. Um, I think they do want you to take a picture of the serial number of the product. Um, before, or at least note down the serial number of the product before you install. Um, so I guess you register based upon the serial number of the product. So don't forget to do that, especially if you're doing this in a pro tower. It'd be really kind of annoying to do that after the fact. I should have mentioned that earlier, but make sure you do that. Anyway, if you found this video helpful, please subscribe, stay safe, and thanks for watching, everybody. Take care. Some bonus footage for you. You can see all the pitting that's taken place. These are actually divots. You can feel them very easily with your fingers. This is all pitting that's taken place in the last couple of years. Again, this thing isn't even two years old yet. So this analog rod still has a considerable amount of life left in it, which is good. This is what it starts to look like. It seems far worse at the bottom than at the top. I don't see any pitting. Really, maybe the pitting is really only in the last eight inches or so. Looking at the other rod as we go up. So you can see, still pretty smooth. Can't imagine what this would have looked like in five or six years. Anyway. Thought I'd share.